right, guys. So yesterday I did report it that Tyrese was arrested for not paying child support to his ex-wife, Samantha. Now, Tyrese was released from jail, and he decided to go and make a video to explain what really went down and why he's so upset that his uh, ex-wife, Samantha, is asking for a lot of money on child support. So, guys, here's the video, and let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and get my outfit together. I think I'm going to go eat me some red lobster. <laughs> I ain't never been arrested. Never went to jail in my life. Never. Why? Because I don't do anything illegal. I want to send this message out to all of the fathers. This is not man versus woman. Make sure I say that. Take all that shit off the table. What I love right now is that from all of the interviews that I've been doing, all of the women who are probably always going to see things through the lens of a woman, feminist, women's group, you know, it's like, I don't care if the woman is wrong. I don't care if what she doing, what she asking for, what she trying to get in alimony, trying to crack the prenup, trying to get this for child support. I don't give a fuck how wrong she is. Most women are always going to see things through the lens of women. So I feel like we're in a real place right now where I could not be more proud of the women that have been vocal and outspoken about all of this goofy shit that my ex is doing and still doing. As a matter of fact, both of my ex. Now, I know y'all are quick to say, playing victim, gaslighting, manipulation, narcissist, they gonna put all kind of shit on you to make sure that whatever they decide to believe about you it's what they want to believe because what? I was born a man. I got it. No one's after me. There's no Crips and Bloods after me. There's nobody in corporate America after me. There's nobody at none of these movie studios after me. There's none of these record labels after me. I got baby mama drama. You get in a relationship with an entertainer who happens to be a public figure or somebody who's a real estate tycoon or somebody in the tech space or somebody who has an actual profitable business. Now, this is what's crazy. Since I've been so public about all the shit that I've been dealing with, you would not. And I have lost count of how many women who have walked up to me who are the high net worth individuals, the ones with all the money and the success talking about how they ex-husband is getting alimony and how the husband is getting child support payments and the husband is getting all that he's doing freeloading the husband got the house doesn't really happen that often but <laughs> when you were born a man you go into a courtroom and you understand clearly that there is a preset menu that says you were born a man fuck you that's what the preset menu says. Now, y'all, I've been laughing, smiling, having fun, doing my interviews, my vibrations, and my energy has been up. And I've been over here silently and quietly in a certain capacity fighting these attacks. Why does Samantha's lawyers just request all of my bank statements? Why are they sending screenshots of my IMDB page, which stands for Internet Movie Database? They're looking up all the movies that I just did and asking for money and money and what's in this account and how much money did you make for Voltron Travel and how many albums have you sold and this and that. Like, leave me the fuck alone, man. I did a prenuptial agreement for a reason. The prenuptial agreement spells out everything that she get and was supposed to get. Why are we now four years and three law firms into this woman still coming after me? 
And why have they, the lawyers representing her, knowing that she's with a celebrity, a public figure, a high net worth individual, why have they confirmed on record that they've only got $5,000 from her and they've been representing her for four years? Why is this so? I'll tell you why. Because lawyers, not all, but certain lawyers out here will look at a celebrity and a high net worth individual as a pot of gold. And they will milk the shit out of you. And she's sitting over there letting them do it. Do you know how many people have went through a divorce and never went to court? You know how many people got issues with their baby mama, baby daddy and never went to court? And they're just being amicable and respectful. You cheated. You lied. You hurt me. You this, you that. You moved on. You got remarried again. You this, you that. But I'm not about to take you to court. I'm not doing doing that to the father of my child. I'm not this and I'm not that. But the moment that you put a little celebrity sizzle on that thing, the moment that that net worth is a little different... All kind of intentions come out. Now, let me make sure I say this. Because it's like, take care of them kids, motherfucker. I've never not taken care of my kids. Let me say it again. I've never not taken care of my kids. As a matter of fact, as much as I travel, as much as I got going on, as much as I'm moving, I'm going to tell you all the biggest blessing ever. Thank you, Jesus. My 17-year-old Shayla has never called me Tyrese. My five-year-old has never called me Tyrese. You know who I am in this house? Dad. And when they refer to me when they're not with me, they say, that's my father. I am dad. And you know why, why I'm dad? Not because of what I bought them, not because of the clothes, not because of the square footage of the house, not because of the cars in the driveway, and definitely not because of this fake jewelry I wear. I'm a father. Because that exchange between your son or your daughter is nothing that could be purchased. It's something that they feel about you as a father Because you have a presence in their life. All this shit about money arguing back and forth. That's for me and my ex to deal with. But when it comes to my kids. My babies. They've never wanted for anything. But I can't stop their mothers from coming after me for more. My mama. Rest in peace. My mama didn't raise no fool. And my mama didn't raise anybody that would just lay down and take whatever somebody wants to dump on me. Now, it's funny how I get along with everybody. You don't see me doing no interview. Even when it came to little random ass shit I was dealing with in the past with Tank and Genuine. Man, come on, man. That's like laughable. We do have some concerts coming up, by the way. With BBD, Silk, and Tevin Campbell. So y'all make sure y'all get y'all tickets to support Real R&B. That's if they don't lock me up in the morning. I know I'm different. I know I'm doing what most people don't do. I can't even say I'm in fear right now. If he's going to arrest me, I'm just going to say, fuck it, man. Get it over with. But the details are very simple. I had one of the most detailed and specific prenuptial agreements in place. And I can talk about this publicly because it's already been addressed publicly. Literally one of the first paragraphs in my prenup. And these are some legal words. It's called contested versus non-contested. And let me break this down for the folks that don't know. When you have a non-contested argument, that means... Everything about these documents is non-contested. We're not arguing about anything. There's nothing to discuss. There's nothing to go back and forth about. There's nothing to unpack. 
Everything that's been mapped out in this prenuptial agreement has been spelled out and laid out. She had an attorney to represent her for the prenup, and I had one as well. That's a non-contested prenuptial agreement. They have contested. They have said that there are certain things in the prenup that that they don't feel the same way about and they want to change it. But, but, but. And so now they're saying it's it's a non-contested prenup. And yet there's at least 15 different examples of them contesting the validity of the prenup. And one of the first terms of the prenup says that if you want to argue about anything that has to do with the four corners of these documents that she signed and I signed, you're 100 percent responsible for your own legal fees. That's what the prenup says. You know, they're trying to get me for over a million dollars right now for legal fees. You know, she's hired three law firms. If you want to argue about the prenup, pay for your own lawyers. And when you lose, you got to pay for all of my lawyers. I got one lawyer that's been representing me from the whole time. Incredible, by the way. Tanya Mitchell Graham. In fucking credible. If you want to argue about the prenup, that's fine. You're legally able to do so. But when you do so, that paragraph right there says you are responsible for 100% of your own legal fees, which means she's now got three law firms, three law firms, but she's really got four because all of the legal fees that I've been paying Tanya Mitchell Graham for the last four years is all going to Samantha. That's the prenup that we both signed. But I've been in my good bag, man. I've been laughing. I've been having fun. I've been running around doing all these interviews, man. I just want to tell everybody out there, man, who's gave me their stage and their platform and their podcast, their radio station. I just want to tell y'all, man, y'all could have had anybody on y'all show. Y'all could have invited anybody on there to be on y'all show. Y'all have helped me to promote 1992. It's got an A-minus cinema score. Man, people are still in the theaters watching 1992 right now. And Beautiful Pain, my album, completely on fire. I heard it is like number 40 or something on the worldwide Apple Music charts, which is crazy. I've never had that. And then my song Wildflower, dedicated to my mother, is still flying. And I'm just trying to be positive, man. I'm trying to like activate some good energy. I've already finished the fucking album and pushed the hardest album I've ever done out. And I just keep getting bombarded by these legals, man. Just last week in LA, some random white lady jumped out the bushes on me and tried to serve me. And I, I fucking backed up. And then she threw the papers at me and they landed in the street. And I said, I said, ma'am, you never served me. She said, you have been served. She's filming me. And I pull out my camera and I'm filming her. And I said, ma'am, the paperwork is not in my hand. As a matter of fact, you put it all in the street. You're loitering. This is a really nice neighborhood right here. And you got trash all over the street. Can I get back to my joy, my happiness and my magic? Can these baby mamas leave me the fuck alone, man? Can they just stop hiring lawyers that's willing to work for them for pro bono because they got a pot of gold waiting on them at the end of the fucking rainbow? Can y'all just move on? Go date somebody. Go engage. Go start a new family. Go just leave me the fuck alone, man. Wow. I mean, fucking thirst buckets, man. And I know these are the mother of my children, but this is true. This is too much. It's been 17 years of this shit, man. I'm about $15 million at this point into having a relationship with my daughters. And I'm not going to cry. I'm just explaining to y'all, man, that this shit is exhausting. 
And women can relate the higher income earners, the breadwinners of their marriages and their families that's been drugged into court. Y'all can relate to this. I'm not just saying this because I'm a man. Does it happen to y'all? More often does it happen to us when we get drugged through the court? No. Just walking into the courtroom as a man, especially a black successful man in Atlanta in front of these all right, guys, so leave a comment down below and let me know how you feel about what Tyrese was saying in his video about his ex-wife, Samantha, asking for a lot of money and child support. And I'll see you next time with a brand new video.